These days, all you hear about the border is this. This is a national emergency. We have to have a wall as part of border security. But this is the U.S.-Mexico border, too. It's quiet here in Del Rio, Texas. But as the Rio Grande flows, so is more expected government money for border security. Because people are crossing. They're all scratched up because they've walked through the brush for days. And I mean, literally, their, their arms are all cut up. Silicon Valley companies are looking to cash in, building a different type of wall, a virtual border wall that could be a security solution that pleases both sides of the aisle. The U.S.-Mexico border stretches 1,954 miles. About 700 of those miles have some sort of barricade or fence, most of which was built after 2006 when Congress passed the Secure Fence Act. The rest is wild, rugged landscape. Everything on that side of the river is Mexico. In Del Rio, besides a fence that is about two miles long, the U.S. and Mexico are divided by natural barriers. We're on the Rio Grande River. We use it for fishing, swimming, canoeing. And that's Mexico. Yeah, you can throw a rock over there if you've got a good arm. But that could change. We are going to build a great border wall. Build that wall! Build that wall! Build that wall! But Del Rio locals see things differently. You want to see her swim? Ready to go? What do you think about building a border wall? I'm against it for here, for sure, because we don't need it. It's a waste of money. Well, I don't like the idea. Were they going to build it over here and then kick all of us out? I'm not for it. I don't know anybody that wants it down through here anyway. It's silly to think that a wall along the whole border is something that could work. People are still going to try and come illegally. They're going to climb over the wall or they're going to dig under it. I think that our county, probably 70% of the people don't want a wall. Joe Martinez has been the sheriff of Del Rio for 10 years. His office is attached to a county jail, where a bulk of the inmates are foreigners who tried to illegally cross the border. But it's not his job to stop them. Every now and then we get a call of, you know, a suspicious person, and we respond to that call. And if it turns out to be somebody trying to come into our country legally, we call Border Patrol and they take the case over. It's about approximately 400 apprehensions a week, more or less, compared to other locations where it might be 1,200 a week. Though it is not known exactly how many people cross over illegally, it's estimated that there are more than 10 million undocumented immigrants living in the U.S. And Border Patrol apprehended over 423,000 people for illegal entry this year. On average, you'll see between 50 to 70 people in court every day for coming into the country illegally. And I'm talking on the, on the daily. And you wouldn't think a small little Del Rio has this big, busy courtroom, but we have one of the busiest courtrooms in the country. Sostenes Migueles is a criminal defense lawyer who defends undocumented immigrants in court. He said that most of his clients are deported. There are some bad guys across the river. Is it the majority of them? No, it's a very small fraction, but there are those people that are crossing. You don't want them in your backyard. To humanize the whole idea of immigration and illegal immigration, they're just coming here because they want to feed their family. Most of them are, are, are waiting across the river, they're swimming across, they're exhausted, they're tired. You know, a lot of times when they get to the jail and they're incarcerated, for some of them it's a relief. They haven't been fed or, or a lot of times they run out of water. Tech companies are trying to make it easier for Border Patrol agents to do their jobs and also come up with an effective border solution that would be cheaper for taxpayers than building a physical wall. The Government Accountability Office estimates that could cost $18 billion. That's a lot of sensor. One company called Quanergy has been flying here from Silicon Valley for a year to test its surveillance system. Quanergy took LiDAR technology it developed for self-driving cars and built out a high-tech virtual border wall. It can detect movement within 360 degrees and 200 meters of the sensor. The software can tell the difference between people and animals. It would then send alerts to Border Patrol when people are detected. 
What LiDAR has the ability to do is to give you pre-buffer warning, to say at 100 meters that something is approaching, be aware. And then by the time they five meters away, as an example, well, okay, this is a serious issue. Hopefully by then the security forces have been mobilized and are ready to respond to what might be at the perimeter. That's what's really unique about LiDAR. It is immune to a lot of the adverse weather conditions. Dark time is the best time for the sensor because it's not working like a camera system where it needs ambient lighting to be able to get a good picture or a good image. Donald Trump wants to build a physical wall along the border. Could this actually replace that? It could certainly be a force multiplier. We believe LiDAR is going to be a technology to enhance, maybe in some cases replace. We've done a calculation for between a one and a half to two mile perimeter being about $250,000 to install with everything it needs to be operational. But technology working in such remote areas is always a question. Even our cell phones didn't know our exact location. AT&T thinks we're in Mexico. We're that close to the border. Even so, Quantergy is one of a handful of companies working on a virtual border wall. Software company Cogniac is building an artificial intelligence perimeter system. And former Oculus founder Palmer Lucky co-founded Anderol Industries, which is also working on security technology. What Lattice is, is an AI-powered sensor fusion platform that can take data from thousands of sensors and integrate it into a single cohesive real-time 3D model that has everything in it tagged using machine learning. So all of the people, all the vehicles, all the drones, all the aircraft across very large areas. And so that has a lot of applications. We're securing military bases. We have sites that are on the U.S. border. And the border is, is one of those applications where you do want to know what's going on so that people know what they're responding to. They can choose what the most important things to respond to. These companies are hoping that electronic surveillance will reach both sides of the aisle. Though there are concerns about civil liberties with too much surveillance, Democrats still see technology as a much better solution than cement and steel. That's a big benefit of the technology. So you have a, a little bit of anonymous benefits. You don't know who it is, but you also know that what that object represents. And Republicans too, like Texas Congressman Will Hurd, have said that electronic surveillance promises greater security and is more cost-effective than a wall. But his office did not respond to repeated requests for comment. The 2018 budget was a win for tech believers, allotting about $400 million for border tech. And lawmakers are debating how much will be allocated for border security next year. President Trump is asking for $5 billion for the wall, which Democrats do not want to give him. And the experts say you can do border security without a wall, which is wasteful and doesn't solve the problem. We think that uh, President Trump, uh, you know, given the, the pushback he's getting on his budget, and when he sees a solution that can cost one or two billion versus 70 billion, he can get on board. And, and on a few occasions, he did mention that when I say wall, you know, I don't really necessarily mean physical wall. It could be a virtual wall. He did mention that on a couple of occasions. The border already has a hodgepodge of cameras, surveillance towers, more than 10,000 underground motion sensors, drones that can detect footprints in the sand, and long-range radars that are searching for activity. But you also see Border Patrol using techniques like this. A U.S. Customs and Border Protection spokesperson said that dragging tires creates a clean pattern in the soil, which makes detecting foot traffic easier. So clearly, upgrades are still needed. And the CBP is working on it, and said in a statement that the U.S. Border Patrol is seeking to leverage advancements in commercial off-the-shelf technology to deploy low-cost, fully autonomous surveillance capabilities. Del Rio locals like the idea of using technology along the border. Sounds like something that, that'll work, I suppose. You know, the, the technology nowadays goes a long ways. Because to put up a wall, I mean, that takes a lot of money. In some areas, that technology would be the way to go. It sends a signal to someone that somebody's trying to come into our country. You know, Border Patrol's been using ground sensors forever. But if you could have some kind of technology to tell you what's coming across, you can uh, send resources out there. That technology can tell you it's a person then you're not wasting that deputies or that border patrol agent's time. Because if he just goes down there because the ground sensor went off, he takes four hours off his shift to go on to check that ground sensor. Well, by the time he gets to that location, whatever set that, that ground sensor off 
It's not going to be there. It's going to keep moving. So with LiDAR, you're at least able to track it. But it seems that any amount of technology would not solve the biggest problem at the border. We don't have the manpower to run the equipment. There are about 16,600 Border Patrol agents guarding the U.S.-Mexico border. The Del Rio sector has about 1,600 of those agents to cover nearly 60,000 square miles. We don't have people to uh, uh, monitor the electronic equipment if you gave it to us. But we don't have the money to hire people to run the equipment. That's the problem we have. Sheriff, have you showed her the old towers? We, they built them, but they didn't have manpower to watch the cameras. Oh, so they've tried something similar, but then well, without the manpower. I don't know manpower. if it ever came to fruition or not. I know that the Border Patrol numbers are down. And if you take the 3,200 square miles that I'm responsible for patrolling, you know, on any given day, I may have three deputies to serve those 3,200 square miles. Manpower is, is a must, together with technology, to better secure our borders. Most of the locals we spoke to have Mexican roots, and they understand why people want to come over. I was kind of inspired by my grandfather because he was first-generation resident alien. Why are people coming here without going through the proper channels? There really is not an easy way to get a visa, whether it be a work visa or a permit to live here. It's really almost impossible to come in a legal way. It's possible. You can do it, but it's very hard. And it's really easy to just say, you know what, I'm just going to cross the river and take my chances. The people in this border town think the focus should not be on the wall, but instead on immigration reform. There's a lot of people that overstay their visa. So even if you put the wall, you're still going to have people flying in or coming in to visit that are not, not going to go back. We're not against immigration. We're for legal immigration. but. Uh, in the old days, everybody would apply, you would go and you would do whatever you had to do and after a year or two, they would let you in and you would sign your papers and you're an American. But the way that they want to do it now uh, is, is horrible. And these people have been coming over here from Mexico, not since yesterday, but for many, 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 many years. And it's not going to stop because we're the closest relief that they have is in the United States. You know, they risk their lives to come over here illegally to try to better themselves and send money back to, to their people in Mexico, you know, because things are just so bad over there. What would you want to tell the rest of the country that doesn't come down here very often? Um, what, what might they not know about living right on the border? I was going to tell these interviewers this. I said, don't tell anybody how nice it is out here. We've got enough people here. We don't want, it's not, look at that, how many cars you've seen racing up and down the road? Yeah. Huh? It's a beautiful spot.